last two days going toward this one game. There's a certain amount of buildup here, and then how do you balance that it is just February 1st and just another game? It is February 1st, and it is just another game. I, I don't feel like we have to balance it. Um, we talk about a lot about there's great players and great teams in this league. It's the NHL, and you need to respect the fact that, um, you know, the game of hockey, if you don't do things and play things the right way, it doesn't matter if you're playing the 32nd place team or the first place team, you aren't going to get burned. And, uh, you know, we, we want to keep a, a, where, the, where we can simplify and keep things simple, we want to do that. And, uh, to that end, tomorrow is another team that can hold you accountable uh, for mistakes. They're a very capable team, and uh, we have to be sharp. So uh, I think our guys are are excited to play. They were excited in practice today. It'll be interesting now with they've had a, a three days in between games, which is something we haven't had in I don't know how long. Um, it'll be interesting to see what effect that may have uh, either way. Um, but uh, I believe they're excited. They're very excited to play. And is there any, I don't want to use the word accomplishment, but if you win this game, you're going to get to the all-star break in a playoff spot, which pretty much I don't know anyone in the hockey world would have said in September. Um, what, what does that say for just opportunity that you have in this game to accomplish something that you could use going forward? Yeah, I think we've our guys have used everything as, as – um, you know, positive motivation is in the, from the standpoint, even the start of the year, they were excited. You know, how much better are we than last year? How much better can we be? How much better can we become? Uh, and that is still kind of their MO and our MO is, is let's keep finding out how much better we can be. And the next game is going to give us another indicator going into Dallas or going into Winnipeg or St. Louis. It's, it, it's, it's been the same feel behind the scenes. Um, we don't know what's going to happen when we went into Dallas, for example. Um, they were the top team in the West, and then Winnipeg was, the, I think, second in the West at that point. And it was, you could feel it, it some real positive adrenaline uh, that you know you have a challenge, and it's going to take a collective effort, but we also love the collectiveness of of, of the team. Um, so these guys have approached things like that with excitement. So I think, you know, when you mention playoffs and it's obvious that, you know, the position we're in, that's going to be talk. That's okay. That's great. That's even, that's even better. We, 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 you know, we're, um, we're comfortable with that and we're excited that we were even mentioned in that, but that doesn't change, uh, the, what's at the core and what's at the core is what I just explained. They, they, they just love the next challenge. John, where do you feel that this team has gotten better since opening night? Really, really every area. Um, you know, especially with a team like this, you have to be healthy. Um, and I think we see that around the league. When teams lack depth, it's really hard. You're, you're, you're just treading water and, and just trying to survive day to day, not build. So we've been healthy enough to keep building. And when you're building, you're getting better every day. And... You know, we had two practice days as a, as a quick visual. I'm excited to go to the bench tomorrow night to see how much better they actually got through practice days and in a couple of video sessions. You know, we're not a team that's had an identity for five years or ten years like some of these teams we've been playing. So we keep adding to it through each experience we go into. Numerous players, their first experience in Winnipeg or in Buffalo or, or excuse me, in Dallas uh, and on and on. And, and – situations and situations together as a team and and so we just these guys feel and see the growth and it's in all areas Don, if, if Owen were to have made the immediate jump after going first overall he would have arrived in the fall of 2021 while you guys were still developing the culture still developing the identity that you referred to arriving when he did how much and you guys had your leadership group you had everything you have now behind the scenes how much has that really helped him Get comfortable and play his game that he played at Michigan. It's you know he's looks like all, in a lot of ways the same player that we saw at Yost you know, a year ago. Yeah, I think it's everything for me uh, personally. Going through it with players, having talked to players, you know, um, when I was with the national team program and, and had 
first round pick players and I several are going through my head here where where I just my advice to them was was don't rush it and, and in Owen's case I remember having a conversation with him uh, before last season and, and, and sharing with him I, I hoped he went back to college um, he had a chance to he went in as a freshman was drafted first overall after his freshman year but when you go in as a freshman you can't target anything you, you've never felt that level of play when you finish your freshman season you can you can reflect on it and target areas that you personally want to improve and I felt that was really key for him and knowing knowing him that he he had hindsight now going into a sophomore year that he could learn to gauge am I right am I wrong am I do I have to elevate here and and uh, and I think he would have lost that year and jump to the next one just to jump to it being with us. So I was really happy he went back. And then on the other side, uh, the stability that we were able to, as you, you mentioned, we, you, you don't like bringing players in, especially in this case a younger player, into unstable situations. So the more stabilized we became, the better it is. Um, and not that I felt we were unstable at the start of last year, but we we continue to, as I just mentioned in the previous question, get more and more stability as we gain more and more experience and guys are here longer, and that happened. He's a guy who watches a lot of hockey, including himself, a perfectionist in a lot of ways, and the best players are. But what are your conversations been like with him throughout the year to, I guess, allow him to just you know, kind of take it easy a little bit and not maybe too, be too hard on himself or maybe you know, take a breath every once in a while, right? That, those are typically the message I, I give him. Um, I have a lot of respect for how hard he works and how intent he is upon uh, becoming better, but I want to make sure that's balanced and he's not working too hard, putting too much pressure on himself that it's negative. Uh, so I actually keep conversations with him minimal about hockey and, and hockey-specific, although there's plenty hockey-specific, but, but make sure it's balanced with just you know, life and breathe and enjoy the moment and, and uh, get excited for the next moment, enjoy that aspect of it, uh, knowing that, uh, reassuring him that the work you're putting in is the reward is going to follow. It's inevitable. And, and we can look at a real easy visual as is three goals in the last three games or three of the last four games, whatever it was, three, three games in a row. There is no doubt that's coming. You, you knew that well before. It's just a matter of, okay, which game is it going to kick in? And I think I said to you guys after the first game, I said he's going to score again, and he scored again that next night. And you just you just know it uh, when you're around these guys and you see that and you've been through the patterns of development. So um, he's got lots of reason to be confident, and our, I think our job is to keep him that way. When the break hits, will you and your staff take a little time away from the rink also? Is that important? Yeah, I'm going to send send them out of there. They, they, they do a great job, and... You know, I worry about how many hours they put into, and they need a break. And but they they stay fresh. I mean, when I think of our staff, I think of and we looked at it when when I was talking to Kevin about who we should put on our staff. And number one for me was people passionate about hockey and people passionate about developing hockey players. And you look at any member of our staff, and they they just they love to come to the rink to work with uh, with guys individually, collectively. They're they're studying film and trying to figure out. Uh, how, how to make us better, how to make each player better. and So they, they, I don't think they're worn out because they have that passion, uh, but it, but I want to keep them hungry too. And uh, when you're away from something for a little bit, you you, you miss it, and I know these guys will. Zemgis has, uh, Zemgis has been around a while, and he hasn't enjoyed a lot of team success. <clears throat> what do you think it's maybe like for him to play the most meaningful games of his career, having waited so long? He's obviously a passionate guy. Yeah, I haven't given that a whole lot of thought, to be honest with you. Uh, but um, you know, just staying in the moment, watching that guy, I, I would imagine it's pretty rewarding for him. Uh, I think he knows how we feel about him as coaches, and and he, despite maybe not having the success he's wanted from a team standpoint, uh, I think he's he's a big, big part of what is happening here and has happened here in, in the progression over the last. Uh, last year and plus um, so he should be proud of that definitely uh, that he's a major contributor to what's happening here in our culture 
uh, and he seems to, even on the ice, he seems to find uh, ways to add to his game. And I still think even though he's an older player by virtue of experience, there's still uh, more to come for him. And uh, I still think that you know, while the team is, is growing, I think he's still growing as a player, and uh, that's exciting. How has he evolved, I guess? I mean, he's known for being a Well, he, you know, he was forced, lots of players, and, you know, when you're a younger player on a team and you're entering the league, you're forced to be conservative. You're forced to play not to make a mistake because you're not in a role that's going to be a goal-scoring role. So you, you're in a role that third, fourth-line player that you cannot afford to make a mistake because you'll be sent down or shipped out. Uh, so you learn to play to not make a mistake. And at some point, you learn to do that so well that you either become conservative and never – advance your career or you learn that okay I have this amazing foundation to work from I'm no longer a liability and liable to be making these mistakes I don't have to play conservative anymore now I have a base with which I can play aggressive and I think that's been our push with him and continues to be our push with him his reflex would be to, to, to play I, I'm worried about my responsibility first and we're pushing him to see okay because you're responsible Here's the opportunities you're generating for yourself. Go after it. And he is. He is progressively, although the years of, of playing, you know, that's a little bit more of a challenge. Um, the way he's played for year, year after year and game after game and day after day, it's a little harder to break that. Um, but he's doing a great job with it. And then I think there's more to him that we'll see. He's, he is a very special guy to our team. Um, he just adds something. He has such a personality that he's, he's a quiet guy, and then all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, why people are migrating toward him and laughing with him. And, uh, you know, he's a little bit of he's a, he's a quiet ringleader is, is what he is. And, and um, you know, he's, he earns – what he gets. I mean, he works. He's a, he's a, what people might not see. He's a tireless worker. He's the off season at his age. He is in shape when he comes to camp. Uh, the highest, he's always the highest on the, amongst the team. Um, and he keeps himself in great shape through the year. So he's dedicated, committed to, to the team. Um, you know, as far as being rewarded from the team standpoint, I guess that's the that's the trouble with being in the team sport. I think if, if that guy was in, in, in an individual sport, he would have been in playoffs every year. Um, but unfortunately, you're in a, his situation, he's in a team sport, and it hasn't worked out that way. But I don't think it's any reflection on him negative. That's for certain. Uh, boy, lot, lots of different areas. Um, he was known when I came in. He was known as a forty goal scorer, and and now he's he's so much more than that to me. I mean, I'm comfortable using him in defensive situations, um, in in overtime situations, um, in playmaking situations, um, in leadership situations, um, even handing off a responsibility, saying, "Hey." Would you take this responsibility and talk to your line about this or a young guy about this? So uh, he's he's pretty versatile and has a lot of experience to offer. Uh, the other day uh, on the road trip, I had him come in and sit with the coaches, and I left the room and had him just talk to with the coaching staff uh, what he's seeing, what he's feeling, what he thinks about our group at this particular moment. Uh, so there's lots of ways that um, you can use – and we can benefit from his experience and his he's a very intelligent and intuitive guy and so recognizing that um, I try to use him any way we, we can see fit at any given moment I think from the outside you know Tage's arrival happened last year when the production really started to spike when you move to the center and all that happens as his coach is there a moment when you realize like maybe the flip the switch flipped a little bit 
probably uh, this before last season when we talked, and, and I was pretty, I guess, aggressive with him that you are an NHL goal scorer now. Stop waiting to be an NHL goal scorer. And we had that talk before the year and gave him a few things to think about, and uh, and he, he, he did. He, he changed his whole mindset with it. And um, the, the point of that, that talk was he's, he's put in all this work to get to some accomplishment off in the future. And you keep working, and it's going to work out in the future. It's going to work out in the future. And you keep doing that, it becomes a hab- habitual and a pattern that that future is always off in the distance. And I needed him to realize that future is not off in the distance anymore. It was five years ago when we were at the U.S. program together. It was two years ago when we you know, we rejoined in, in Buffalo. But it's not anymore. It's not. It's now. This is the now. You've done it. And... Uh, and that was the moment I'll, I'll always remember for that because he did. He kicked it, kicked it in gear. And, you know, the, the position I was in from the coaching standpoint was one that I could give him opportunity that I knew he could, he could take advantage of. And that was my message back to him. And, and it was, now let's take advantage of it. So, uh, How has Tage been able to make another jump this year after that big jump a year ago? Just his capacity. I mean, he has such a capacity for growth still this moment um, that, that – he expects to be better next week, better than he was at any point in his career, and a month from now, better than he ever was in his career. And, and that that drive uh, that he has is is what all great athletes have, um, combined with talent. And and he's got those two things that um, he, the the capacity to grow and the capacity overall is still immense. What is that next level if he's going to get better in a month or two or a season? Just even more efficient everywhere with the puck and without the puck. I mean, you can break it down to that simple. Reading plays, reading, being aware of situations, um, taking advantage differently of time and space. And still, he still plays with some anxiety. Still plays with, with I, I have to make a play now and, and uh, could, could force a play. But he can also impose his will on guys too. So it's, you know, it's, it's learning the balance of when he has that moment that he can imposes his, his skill set on a guy and when he might need to be a little bit more patient. And no different than we've seen the growth out of Rasmus Dahlin. You know, a year and a half ago, he, he would run here and run there, and now he's like, okay, uh, I can wait half a second and then, 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 then make that jump, and it's, it'll be more decisive. And so you, you just learn that um, you keep adding to your game each situation. Matthias, Matthias. Yeah, the hope is. Um, so I'll find out. I'll talk to these guys, and we, I might not make it. We might not make a decision, Kevin and I, till the morning. So we'll we'll see. But they they definitely look good on the ice. I haven't talked to them after they came off the ice. So by the looks of it, um, I was I was happy with what I saw, and we'll let the medical team do what they have, give us their assessment, and discuss it, and uh, probably. Um, the latest will have a decision after the morning. Don, you can count on one hand how many games this team will be playing at Key Bank Center over a month's time. How important is it for tomorrow, heading into the All-Star break, and you guys having a, a 10-day break, that there is that energy that in the crowd that they feed off of so much? It's, it's, it's awesome to have. Um, important... Um, you know, we know, and our guys know, we've talked about it all along, you have to earn it. So um, if we do the right things, that this building is going to be full and full consistently for the right reasons. And um, But as far as important, what's important, I think, is we show up and play. And and it's a bonus. Everything after that's a, a, and obviously a bonus for us and for our guys because they love it. Um, but they have to stay focused on that preparation. And going into a break, if you can go into a break with a win, uh, it makes the break a heck of a lot better. So um, that's that's the other bonus uh, to winning uh, the next one specifically.